Right, we might as well make a start. So uh, welcome to the second day of our workshop. What we've um, got planned for today is that first um, we put together a slide presentation and I drew the short straw to actually talk through it of some of the key points that came out from yesterday. And we'll then um, move on to the various discussion sections as explained in your email. Um, just to remind you, usual Zoom things, um, muted to avoid um, echo and um, that we are, remind, say that we are recording the session. So just let me um, find the share button again. Uh, Kim, can you turn on my sharing, please? Two sec, sorry, Jane, it's disappeared with the screen. <laughs> There you go. Lovely. Thank you. Great. So, so workshop day two. The Virtual Paleo Sciences project was always designed as having uh, three stages. So we were thinking in terms of short term, medium term and long term goals. And we're about halfway through what we thought of as short term, which were to collate resources, to identify gaps, and to create a plan to start going after low hanging fruit. So to start filling the easy gaps and to start to build this website. In the medium term, which very broadly overlaps obviously, but is broadly the coming academic year, <coughs> our goals were to complete the website is what we had, complete the first round of filling in those gaps, um, to look at the pedagogy, at the experiences of people uh, working through this and using these online materials because it's a great opportunity uh, to investigate, support the various activities and make funding applications for both um, projects related to student learning using um, online materials to both to either replace or enhance practical learning and for the development of a virtual field trip in the longer term um, we had big ambitious ideas including things like coming up with plans for the long-term curation of the spreadsheet and web pages hopefully in collaboration with learned societies so that there is a plan for it to survive um, the funded development of uh, a landscape level multi proxy field course with the idea that you could use it every week through a module and go into it and core it and explore it and investigate it and bring samples back in the lab from it, you know, so that it would be um, a fully integrated virtual resource. And with the overall ambition of improving the integration of virtual and online materials and resources into paleo sciences, which will both improve accessibility and equality, but would also benefit both teachers and learners. And everybody benefits if we, um, for example, are able to include more voices, more opinions in our lecture. If we're talking about environmental change in the Sahara, if an African scientist um, can, is giving, giving a 10 minute lecture can be built into our materials, everybody benefits from that. So in the end, we would like to produce something that lasts and persists and is very widely valuable. Most of these slides are just discussion points and things that I picked up from day one. So first, a few uh, very general points. The, uh, it's clearly necessary that the um, spreadsheets that we developed over the summer by the different working groups, starting from uh, the same base sheet as the master copy now need to be integrated back into the master copy to make sure there's not duplication of effort. We need better communication and that's definitely a job for the coordinating group, but we need better communication between working groups and with the wider project membership. And one suggestion around this was that rather than every group rely on sending out their own messages and therefore sometimes people getting lost between in the gaps, um, that uh, we, we do better to have a more structured monthly newsletter. 
um, and that we have outputs uh, from the project that need working on fairly uh, urgently. So developing the website and actually getting it out there so people can begin to see us as a really useful resource rather than as a future useful resource, um, which is the task of working group one and the interns. Uh, getting the static spreadsheet out there, so a copy of the spreadsheet which summarises the things, summarises what we've um, got so far, those um, resources. Now attached to your email uh, with the link for today, you should have got a draft of that, so the current, a current version um, of links which have all been checked by Ahmed, one of our interns. Uh, and quite possibly, if you've had a play with that, you've already spotted things that are missing in terms of your favourite stuff, please let us know. But also that um, it was important to have some kind of list of what is coming when. So if materials are coming in the next few weeks or the next few months so that people could plan whether they'll be available. And also a place where people can see what's being done and sign up into the gaps. So expert talks, for example, to share a list of who's been approached, who's definitely agreed to do a talk when they're doing it. And if there are topics that appear to be missing. Now, of the, we have four working groups today, four workshops today. The first one is about the virtual field trip and landscape level trip, which we didn't really talk about much yesterday or not much came out. So I don't have a slide for that, um, particularly for that group. Um, we'll revisit some of the points and the slides to each workshop at the start of that workshop. Um, so starting with the idea of the working group workshop two, which is concerned with all the little pieces um, and options that turn up on the that go on the website, the small resources. One thing that came up was the need to add columns that gave indications of um, how much bandwidth the resource used, so how accessible it is, and of what platform it works on, because some things only work on a PC or only on a Mac some things are not mobile friendly, etc. So adding that and then rechecking all the resources is definitely a task um, to try and organize. Uh, the collecting a list of who's doing what, um, and we identified the expert talks as a particular example where community members were really keen uh, to contribute. Um, and saw that, for example, in, in all those areas, the priority is to have basic guidelines again that people can share uh, so that people can confidently contribute something whether that's a cover slide that everybody uses or the logo or whatever and that's something that the next coordinating group will pick up um, and, and hopefully confirm but working group four I know we're on the ball with that now people are back from holidays an area that came out was the teaching of data analysis steps and um the idea that people would both be keen to share and very keen to have access to uh, shared resources people have prepared and that might be explainers how to do a particular task um hand it whether that's just a simple word document as a handout a walkthrough video a recommendation of software uh, that's particularly good for different tasks where to access it um and we found that even the really simple things, um, so how to detrend a line in Excel, say, if someone's written a walkthrough, that would be great because then it, it saves time from a lot of other individuals reinventing that. Because one of the issues was is that with long distance learning, you don't have the same opportunity to walk around a room in a practical, see students having issues, stop the class, give a quick talk, and, and remind of things or clarify or help out with individuals, which means the instructions need to be extra clear. Um, and we also identify, and also that this is an area that many um, academics worry about their ability to do. Um, and we also identified that some students are in institutions where they're starting with R very early, and so they're happy to work in an R environment, but that some aren't, some introduce it later on or don't use it at all. And also some academics don't use R or don't want to deal with the added complication of undergraduates trying to handle R um, on top of handling data and environmental science ideas. 
you can only handle so much novelty at once or so much challenge and if they're focusing on the r they might not be focusing on the actual uh, interesting problem that you want them to be working on so again this is something creating a way to do that was something that came out in addition creating collecting data sets that could be used for assignments or practicals or workshops especially unpublished data sets or simulated data sets suitable for um, an assignment um, is something that has been on the uh, radar as something that working group uh, the working groups would like to do but it's not been a priority but several people brought it out again yesterday so that suggests it should be a searchable photo gallery of creative commons images of all sorts of things to do with paleo but especially some of the obscure things like a photograph of some um, peat microstructures peat microfossils a dish of, of washed out peat photographs of the different charles smith uh, classes or sediment clearly classified by Charles Smith, that sort of thing um, is definitely desirable, but um, that's likely to be a project. It's quite a substantial project when we start thinking about it. And if anyone wants to take that on, we'd be delighted with volunteers. Um, so information about um, those things are definitely within the remit of workshop too. Um, general points included that the website needs to hurry up. Yes, we are aware of this, but yes, the website needs needs to grow. The structure of the web pages that's been proposed seems to have been generally approved by people, so we can actually build out from that. And the focus of the three working groups that are focused on generating stuff, so field work, lab work, uh, data collection and analysis and uh, expert talks is now sh is shifting at this point from collation and gap identification to resource creation. So we need to develop or take suggestions on better ways to structure the work of those groups to avoid duplication of effort. So again, lists that are easy to access about what's going on, advice so not every everybody isn't individually learning how to make films and edit them but so, but you can someone has worked it out and made a document that can be shared and ensuring what's going on so some repetition so key areas here um in the short term the website build is very much on uh, in the plan um and then in the medium term um i remind that uh, steve juggins promises a new copol in the next uh, sort of six to nine months um, will hopefully be available for at least testing in trimester two or semester two depending on how you structure so the third um, workshop is on teaching and pedagogy and um, one point that uh, we wanted to be very clear about is that our aim is to be a maker space more than a shop. We provide bits and pieces and suggestions and everyone makes their own courses. We don't tell people how to do things. So providing lots of bits and pieces is, is the remit of our project. But within that, the pedagogy group wants to try and provide examples of how materials might be used, like the pedagogic journey that they showed you yesterday as an example. Um, we want to make sure we include some student viewpoint comments on materials and that's now the interns are in place is, is something that happens over the next few months. They also want to make it a lot easier to access or to get a toehold into the pedagog pedagogical literature and to provide support for people who want to develop small research or use an action research approach to developing their own teaching in this new world. In many ways, we're all first year lecturers again, because we're dealing with this very different situation. Things that came out yesterday were the idea of a support group. Um, Vips T or G and the idea that, you know, if it had been a good week or a particularly good or particularly bad week, you might need gin with your discussion. The idea may be monthly meetings, spaces to ask questions and so on. Um, one thing that came out that hadn't been on our radar and proves the use of these community workshops is the importance of capturing anything we learn during semester one and conveying it to people before semester two. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to learn there. 
and also that many people in this group are really concerned about accessibility and digital poverty um, and these big issues for students and whilst vips is not about is not primarily about addressing that that has to be a institution and even a society level um, solutions uh, what we can do is make it easier for staff to take local action for academics to take local action by having these extra columns in the spreadsheet and flagging up materials and ways of using them that might be particularly valuable or that might present problems to students some students genuinely struggle to learn from recordings if they have um, hearing difficulties or attention difficulties um, and making sure options are provided uh, can be very valuable um, as a little side note um, the various discussions around teaching also brought out various tips about teaching in this new world people have been teaching in the summer people learnt things in march april may people have been on institutional courses so i thought it would be worth sticking together a quick slide of that information and i think the probably the most important point is that good enough is going to be good enough we're still teaching in a crisis this is not a new normal yet we haven't had the time to develop all this new teaching and my institution for example has recognized the challenge by considering every module to be a new module in the workload model that means everybody in the department is carrying a 200 plus percent workload that's not really helping so good enough is what we're going to have to have we are still in this crisis phase secondly the the relationships um, the support of students matters and probably comes first rather than making sure we get exact subject coverage and that we're technologically perfect supporting students pointing out that we're all in this together that you're we're learning as well as them is really important we talked about um, ways of getting feedback from the room and again this came up from several places and in fact I think Think this kind of workshop gives us good practice we're using the chat we were using the various um, the reaction tools that um, you can pop up so if you pop up the instruction bar um, you can actually find uh, usually from the three button drop down you can find a reaction option which lets you do a thumbs up or a wave or depending on your tool and we can use those things and encourage students to use those things to read the room um, and similarly in these systems it's possible to put in a profile picture so that rather than just your name when your camera's off you can actually see a picture so Des is doing that today and that um, that can help you because you're not talking to a blank space and it can also help students because you're respecting their right to keep their camera off if they're actually trying to do their video cast in the front of a, you know if they're trying to attend classes in a completely chaotic bedroom that they share with a sibling or something like this there are so many new tools we're all finding out about all these wonderful new tools our institutions are buying licenses and sending us messages we're talking to each other and hearing about and seeing incredible examples and i think that comes back to good enough is good enough picking a few and making sure that neither you nor the students get overwhelmed and as we were saying around the point that came out to me about R or not R, helping ensure that it, it, your course doesn't become a course about using new technology for the first half hour of every week but it remains a course about content in which people learn together pick stuff try it out um, use the same thing so that people can build confidence with their skills and that applies to both staff and students um, simon has a great idea which is that we could have a page called a tool shed where someone's used a tool and found a common problem or found a fix we can share that information one important point about um, teaching preparations and so on is that uh, about all of this is this is still a crisis and kindness to ourselves to students and to everyone is going to be really important and that structure is really important 
we I've already mentioned that the not being able to go around in practicals is really challenging. One of the things that I know I'm going to find particularly difficult is the number of times you're in a practical and they're all working away and you go up to a student, how are you doing with the microscope? I'm fine, but can I just ask you about? And those casual, informal, private little conversations, little questions and so on are gonna be very hard. Um, as we help students build confidence in, in actually being able to ask them in the same private, unembarrassing way in a virtual spaces and building structure into into work especially early on is going to be important for all of us so back to our main workshop our fourth workshop is about our structure and how we organize ourselves so the vips project we created a structure that we thought would work for the first stage in essentially, as we know, both an emergency and over the summer when people had children at home and leave planned and all sorts of other commitments, which is really important. So now we've tried it out for a few months, it's time to think about whether it's working and what is and isn't working and how to take it forward. Points that came out yesterday is that working groups two and three probably are ripe to restructure, want to restructure, and the um, a proposed structure was that they should be landscape scale as opposed to techniques rather than the current arrangement which is field versus everything to do with data that is not field. Working group one is probably at a point where they need to think about refocusing or changing their emphasis. Um, so um, is collation done how are we going to manage new contributions as people start creating stuff um, and that's going to be very important and, and become more important as we go forward um, the working groups may also want to create structures internally they may want to start to have different projects so for example in working group five we've talked about a longitudinal study we've talked about student support and it may be that they decide to create a structure to support that or have named people responsible or not. Um, but this is this is the time to start that discussion um, and have that discussion. And this is also a good time to rethink membership of working groups. Um, we expect turnover, we always have done. Um, people will have, everything's changing, it's a very unstable world, people will have uh, found that their commitment to they, they have new duties or that they are able to commit and as, as things are settled down so we expect turnover we expect people to move into and out of the core the groups that the, the coordinating group that looks after the working group we expect at this stage that members will be get more involved coordinators may change so we hope for volunteers uh, more people who'd like to join the groups that meet every few weeks and actually try and plan out the work and make it happen um, and we also expect that some people are going to find that they need to step down um, does the image bank project itself merit a new working group since it, it's a great idea and it starts it's it's got layers of complication as we start to think about it After the workshop, um, the next step will be to send out a message to everyone. And this is partly a reminder to me and partly a request from you to let us know what um, things you would like to hear about if you hadn't been able to attend this workshop. And the things that we've identified so far are that the feedback or feed forward form about the workshop, the website and so on. Um, so it's a happy sheet in some ways for this workshop but it also asks about the future of the project uh, so we'll include a link to that for everyone and the first question is did you or did you not attend the workshop so we'll be able to see if you people who attended have different views um, than those who didn't it'll include some information on the first release of substantive materials on the website so we intend to put a version of the master sheet that you've already got a preview of um, out by the end of this week 
and also links for contributions um, to be submitted. It will include some information on how we're going to communicate going forwards. So this idea of a newsletter and of any future events we're planning. So if we um, agree that we want this support group and we can plan this support group, um, however informally or informally that happens. Information on, the, on any new changes to the structure, so any new working groups uh, and the remix of the working groups and um, invitations to get involved. And as part of that, information is the link these lists about what is being done, what isn't being done, and ways that people can sign up to, for example, give an expert talk or um, contribute a video that they've been developing themselves over the summer. Note saying someone needs to own that as maybe something for the groups to think about or somebody to step up and say, I can do that. I can set up a Google sheet and um, make sure that it's, it's tidy. So the schedule for today is um, to think about some of these medium and long term foci. So we're at that transition point where the medium term projects are starting and the short term projects are maybe not finishing, but they are beginning to come to the end. We know, we know where we are with them. Um, so we've got workshop one on virtual field trips, workshop two on the smaller resources and workshop three on pedagogic projects. And then workshop four on the future, the structure and the goal setting. And that's today's schedule What's the time. Um, so we are almost running to time, which is nice. Uh, there's one comment from Dave in the chat about the teaching. He says that good enough is good enough is a good point. Um, but that he wonders about the extent to which the expectations of students have been managed and particularly new students. The what are we getting for our money? And I think that's something that is going to be really important for us all to keep discussing and is a particular thing that it might be it's it's going to be worth thinking about at an institutional level i think we have all sorts of problems i think the sector has often promised all sorts of things for very reasonable business reasons um, at the personal level i'm certainly going to be using the approach that was taken by has been taken by various american colleagues who also shared uh, revised syllabi and examples of, of materials of addressing it very clearly from the beginning. This is what you are getting for your fees. You are getting my expertise. You will get access to X, Y, Z. And yes, I agree. And sometimes that the students are not getting all the things they signed up for, but they are getting the absolute best the lecturers can give them at the time. They And this is the choices we're making. I don't know if that's very helpful. Uh, Simon's also made the point that all this material will remain, will be useful, even if we all go perfectly back to normal. And I think that's important in two ways. Uh, Simon mentions access and yes, making sure that students can still engage with their studies, whether they've broken their leg for a couple of weeks or whether they have permanent limitations is really important. But the second thing as well is to enhance existing studies. Let's get the most out of our field work. Uh, let's get the most out of our lab time. So let's get the most out of, um, say, time with microscopes by using something like Copol or an image bank to actually do some practice beforehand in changing it. Uh, the first year we used Copol, the biggest change was from students saying, is this pollen? in the practical to them saying is this a correlus and that difference was huge in terms of how they enjoyed the class and how we enjoyed the class and got stuff out of it um yes so great discussion in the day and i hope we'll pick that up as the day goes on and as i say through this sort of support mechanism but it is now half 11 so i would like to hand over to des who is starting the first who is leading the first workshop about virtual field trips thanks thanks jane that is fantastic timing 
Um, thanks for the introduction as well. That's a, it, it gives a real flavour of the complexity of the project and how much work has been done uh, and equally how much still has to be done. So um, I don't really use Zoom very much. I'm going to share my screen or try to and I will share screen two. There you go. I think you can all see my slides now, yeah? Yes. Splendid. Thanks for that. Okay, uh, virtual field trip workshop. Uh, this is working group two. I'd like to apologise uh, to everybody else in working group two because uh, I put this together at fairly short notice, so uh, there's not been extensive consultation or indeed any uh, at all. I do hope this, however, captures the, the, the sense of the group and they will, of course, be able to chip in as we go along. So, uh, as Jane explained, we have made progress overall. As far as working group two is concerned, um, progress has been somewhat more limited and for very understandable reasons. So in order to work out what we wanted to do, we, there was an element of uh, uh, collation of existing resources as well. So there's a bit of overlap. Uh, I think that was unavoidable. Uh, we have had some form responses in terms of uh, the development of new resources. Thanks to everybody. I had a look at the, uh, the, the membership list today, the attendee list, and uh, most people who've suggested new virtual field trips and other resources are present. So thank you very much uh, for that. We didn't get that many, so I will uh, come back to that shortly. It's always the case that the time scale for working group two is going to be one to two years plus. So in some ways we're just getting started unlike the other working groups and the purpose of this workshop really is just to um, start moving things forward. Um, I had to, yeah, I, after putting the slides together I came back and put start in uppercase because it's actually quite a big project and, and putting together the slides has been useful for me to reflect uh, what has been done but equally what still needs to be done. Uh, just for something a little bit interesting and I use the term loosely, uh, I don't know if anybody's used VVOX before um, so we could try this for a little bit of fun and if you search for vvox.apps, I'm assuming you're not doing work emails at the moment and you're, you're um, listening along, if you could search in Google for vvox.app, that spelling, it allows you to uh, sign in just to a, a, an online page and if you enter the ID uh, shown here, the one beginning 145, that allows you to submit your responses as we go along. Whilst you're doing that, uh, Vivox is just, um, it's, a, it's really a PowerPoint add-in which you can get for free. There's a paid version, but the free version offers is most of what the paid for version uh, provides and it's all done entirely within PowerPoint and that makes it a little bit different from others. So as I talk, I've got no idea whether anybody's doing this or not, but in the next slide uh, we will get to that. So vvox.app, uh, if you go into that and enter the ID number, the ID number will appear in subsequent slides, so, so don't fret as we go on to the next slide now. So just to test this, and <laughs> see if anybody's joined up. Uh, so here's a question, have you used vvox or similar uh, online polling systems before. Uh, similar might be Mentimeter. So 17 people have signed up. Thank you for that. Oh, there you go. You're way ahead of me. I can see at the top 16 out 19. There you go. Thank you very much. Uh, that went better than I was expecting. I expected nobody to engage at all. So this should show you light. So most of you have, uh, but a third of you haven't. And thanks. <laughs> or nobody uh, going for option three. So that was just a kind of practice. So uh, back on track, virtual field trips, what should we be doing? I think a bigger question here really is, what do we mean by virtual field trips at all? And, and apologies for the minor diversion, but I, sh I think without us understanding what we're talking about, particularly within the constraints of working group two, it's very difficult to make progress in this area. Um, as you'd expect, there's no standard definition of what a virtual field trip is. That's not a problem. Uh, but it is fair to say that we've moved a long way from the text and photo pages of 20 years ago. Um, here's an example from 2002, uh, a, a geology one. 
And this is the type of approach that some of us, uh, those of us who've been around long enough, uh, may be using to try and work our way around the foot and mouth disease, which stopped field work uh, back, in the, back in the day. So uh, here's a question. How long have you been using virtual field trips in your teaching? Um, you may not have used them at all, uh, and then options two to four depend on really how long. So please um, vote away. Ah, 25 have signed up now, you've seen how much fun it is. Okay, I'm just going to close the polling just in a second. We've got 26 out of 28, so apologies for those. I'll close that now. Okay, so most people have never used one. Okay, that's that, that's helpful for me to uh, know. Just over a quarter for less than a year, and not many of you, how to be able to do the mass, have been using it. Uh, for longer than that. I think if it were me, I would have voted for over five years. So, no, um, no standard definition, we've moved a long way, and there's a variety of technical and pedagogic, uh, pedagogic approaches uh, operational today. Is that a good thing? I think in balance it is. Uh, I, I hear people saying, well, we don't want to throw too many things at students and staff. I do take the point, but also a little bit of variety within reason uh, is good to maintain interest uh, amongst staff uh, and also students as well. So from a technical point of view, uh, two main approaches that we can support. There's more than that, but two main approaches to virtual field trip development that we can support. Firstly, we've got the street view type approach, that 360 degree immersive imagery, and that immersive imagery might be the kind of panoramic photos you can look all around. It could be moving video, uh, with a lot of bandwidth there. That's much less common, but you can get 360 videos as well. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, and that immersive, this immersive uh, virtual field trips may include additional content, maps, talking heads, additional data. Second approach that I want to focus on in, in this presentation really is more a, a map-based content collections. And that's where you use uh, Google Earth tours or Esri story maps. There are other approaches available as well. So let's have a look at these now. Uh, I'm going to start. So Michaela is, I think, with with us in the group. So uh, I happen to spot she's she's did this. I'm not stalking Michaela. She tweeted it, and uh, she's made it available, and she may be able to share something. Um, so what she's Done. I should have checked with her before, but she's uh, captured 360 degree imagery uh, for Mal and Tarn. And uh, this is the sort of thing that we're talking about immersive imagery. You click in the hotspots and you move forward, and there's different ways to navigate, and there's a kind of Google Map type uh, approach as well. So this is the immersive uh, imagery approach. There's also VR glaciers, but uh, many of you will. Uh, be aware of that already. We've also got the Google Google Earth Tour approach. I'm going to click in this now. Now, Nikki um, in Working Group 2, her and her team have produced a lot of really good work using Google Earth and also Esri Story Maps. And this is a different approach. It's not so immersive, but it's still visually rich. So we've got a range of resources here. Um, Nikki's interests are more kind of coastal. So we're going to go into present mode and it's okay. It's all really simple to, to navigate. You've got imagery and content. Uh, I'm going to skip through there and go to uh, here for reasons I can't recall. Um, you get lots of photos, you get maps. Uh, there's lots of nice things. I'm sorry, Nikki, I'm not really making the most of this. Uh, here's one of the uh, ones you, you, you can navigate. Uh, the, the, the imagery here, there's content in the right, uh, the right hand side in the column and you can work your way through pictures. It's possible to include Google Street View up here as well, assuming you actually have access to uh, those resources. 
Story Maps is also interesting. It's a different approach. And I believe you can access Story Maps for free, which is a slightly cut down version. Google Earth uh, tours you can produce for free. So this is the Esri Story Maps. And if I leave it, you, this is actually um, the, the header image. It's a nice little video. So it's uh, visually rich and we scroll down. And it's again, it's content and imagery. Uh, Nikki was saying some of the, the, the templates for this a little bit more restricted, but that there is, you know, some nice interaction. Uh, video can be included. Sorry, I'm just really whizzing through this now just to give you a kind of sense of what it's about. And, you know, it requires, we we'll say it requires no technical skills. You've got to have some sort of understanding, I guess, of what's going on. So um, these are the two main approaches. And the one you're likely to use, I guess, depends on how you'd like to use your virtual field trips. So this is where uh, it comes down to pedagogy. For example, you may want to use your virtual field trips to communicate, to transmit a lot of information about a field area. That's fine. Um, alternatively, it may be a basis for student activities. I say student activities, I'm thinking of the ways that we use some of the VR Glacier's work at the University of Worcester. Uh, it can be for assessments, we use them for mapping, we use it for landform and landscape interpretations, student presentations, a whole range of things. And actually the preparation for real fieldwork is only a minor part of how we use virtual fieldwork. So the uh, pedagogy side is important. They're not mutually exclusive. So you might want to communicate information as well as provide activities as well. But you've got to, you've really got to start your development of virtual field trips with the end in mind, begin with the end of mind, with the end in mind, as someone said. And I would like to make the point here that virtual field trips, virtual field work, uh, can be so much more than a COVID-19 alternative. I suspect that's why most of you are here today, uh, you're interested here. Um, there's a lot more you can use virtual field trips for, and I would um, advocate for the use of virtual field trips, not to replace real field work, uh, but as a, as a part of your curriculum under normal uh, situations. So what, where are we then? Well, firstly, pedagogy trumps technology. Um, well, I guess they work together, but pedagogy needs to be our starting point. Uh, and as far as working group two and what we can reasonably support, we're really talking about immersive ground level imagery or map based content collections as uh, epitomized by, by, by Nikki and her team. So these are the two main approaches. Other approaches include working with games engines such as Unreal or Unity. Um, I have no experience in that at all. And um, I'm not sure whether anybody else in working group two has. So that's why we're focusing on those two um, technical approaches. So we've got to think about what we want to get out of our resources. So what do uh, VIP members want? Uh, you'll recall we submitted a form. Uh, we got 15 responses, only 15. We, we could have pushed it a little bit more, but we didn't. It's that time of year during the summer. Uh, one person submitted six responses. Uh, you know who you are, Nikki. Um, and I think, uh, I think in Nikki's case, uh, that may have been, and I could be wrong, correct me in the, the comments, uh, which I can't actually see in my screen at the moment. But I think that was more to alert us of the projects you're planning to work on rather than requests for new ones. Uh, so if we discount Nikki, that leaves us with eight, uh, eight people. Uh, two people responded uh, to requests each. So thanks to everybody who submitted requests. Most, with the exception of Nikki, have little or no uh, experience in the development of virtual field trips. So that's something we need to be mindful of. It's not a problem, uh, but it, it is something we have to take on board. And also there are no common themes. So what I'm going to do now is I've tried to keep my text fairly big so you can see it in small screens and tablets. But I'm now going to show a slide uh, that's uh, extract from the slightly edited extract from the spreadsheet and this is what people wanted we've got two columns here and the left hand column what would you like to see included in the virtual field trip and the right hand uh, column is about geographic area you're particularly interested in just to give you an opportunity just to take this in i'm going to stop talking for about a minute or two maximum 
and then I'll carry on in a sec. So we'll read away. Okay, so I'm not great with uh, long silences unless it's to avoid me volunteering for something. So it seems like two minutes, so we'll um, carry on. Uh, as you can see, there's no real consistent theme. There's lots of interesting uh, projects there, all the, something I would like to pursue. I've got two people, sorry, one person suggesting that they can coordinate something from uh, New Zealand, providing some slightly different environments. That would be, that would be good. So what now? I've told you what we can, what I think we can support, the two main approaches. I said a little bit about pedagogy, not very much. Uh, what should be the role of working group two in all this? You will get an opportunity to feed in uh, imminently. So what should be the role of working group two in all this? Um, and what should we do about the limited number of responses? I could go out and get some more, but already um, I think we've got enough to see me through to uh, retirement or more or redundancies, uh, whichever uh, comes first. So there's a lot, potentially a lot of work even in that. So that takes us to the discussion now. Hopefully, Kim, you are uh, pretty much in hand to split people up into breakout groups. So here's the question, What's, what is or what should be the role of working group two in supporting the development of virtual field trips? And just to give you a little uh, few hints to something to think about, firstly, uh, working group two could really be more of a matchmaking role, putting people in contact with others wanting to develop virtual field trips. Um, but that's really only going to work if there is some understanding about the technical side. And if there isn't, um, there's only so far you can go there. Uh, secondly, uh, working group to maybe prioritise more the, the development themselves and coordinating the development of virtual field trips. Um, and that might be one or two. Then the question might be, well, how do we go about deciding themes, location, approach? And maybe if we go down that route, we need to develop some guiding principles. So we might say, well, we're going to focus more on developing something flexible uh, that can be used in a range of contexts. And then, you know, rather than the more information rich Google Earth tour type approaches, uh, perhaps you see working group two more as a technical support role. Uh, and that's, that's fine. We could produce guidance for the use of Google Earth tours and Esri story maps. Again, Nikki's got a lot of experience now that I'm nominating uh, Nikki for all of this work, but we could produce something together. Uh, and fourth, and the inevitable, all of the above. Uh, is there as well. So that's something to be getting on with. So Kim, are we able to break people down into uh, breakout groups for what time is it? It's 10 to, to 12 or maybe 10 to uh, 10 minutes looking at the time, 10 to 15 minutes. Yep, I've got about eight or nine people in each room, so I can, if that's about right in terms of numbers, or I can add more rooms. That's, that's, that's great, if you just want to uh, go ahead with Yep, rooms with are now that. open. Thank you very much. Brilliant. 10, 15 minutes, so I'll, I'll call everyone back in a little bit then. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. See you soon. See you. So these are the things that I was wanting you to discuss. We don't have... We've got very little time left, so rather than get try to get people to feed back and then uh, risk overrunning, uh, I'd like to try another aspect of the VVOX uh, um, polling system and just see uh, if everybody um, can enter what they thought perhaps was the most important point to emerge from the discussion that has just taken place. So I have actually taken notes from my own uh, group. I should have said if somebody could do that for everybody, but it's not really a problem. Um, but if you could think about what you've just been talking about, what do you think is the most important thing that working group two needs to take away from the discussion? Uh, and this is a free text thing. So just enter a little bit of text here, please. Uh, a sentence will be fine. Don't spend too long because, well, we don't have very long. I just have one slide after this to, to finish off. So 
I uh, will leave you in a little bit of peace and quiet for a couple of minutes whilst you type something. Thank you. Is are you looking at the chat as well? Uh, no, I, I can't find how to get the chat up when I'm in presentation mode. Um, okay, it's just that I think some people are having VVox issues, and there's a few comments in the in the chat as well. So I wouldn't want to miss those. Right. Okay. We'll, we'll capture that. Yeah. Th thank you, Simon. So far, tools, examples, and hints and tips. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Quick how tos. <laughs> Ah, 20, yeah, 27 responses. That's pretty good, really. Um, I'm just about, so I don't want to close it when you're halfway through a sentence or a paragraph or whatever. So, a young essay. I am about, to, yeah, you can always copy and paste it into the chat comments if you want. So, I'm about to move on. Okay, that's it. I'm finishing this. Um, he says, not finishing it. There we go. Data capture. So I ought to be able to uh, have this, uh, access this, and I will, I will share it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So times against us just now, but I, I, I think we're, I'll be able to share some of this uh, later today. What I would like to do is to, other than thank you for, for participating, um there's a lot to do uh i certainly enjoyed the uh the group uh, breakout group i was involved in i'd like to draw your attention to the enhancing fieldwork learning showcase this is uh, being supported by the british ecological society it is on the 8th of september there is a um, program up already you can access via this link uh simon i believe is doing a talk as am i so, and to register, you've got to send an email uh, to that address. We can get in details out afterwards. Uh, the talk I'm doing, I'm, I want to say a little bit more about the uh, technology and pedagogy associated with the VR Glaciers project. And uh, I'm really keen to, to share the different ways in which field work, virtual field work plays a part in a normal year, including for inclusivity uh, purposes as well. Um, and just to be clear, it's not some sort of easy fallback because uh, you're expecting people to climb up mountains or because your students can't afford your long haul field. So, yep, yeah, uh, that presentation is actually already done. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. So we'll see you then. Uh, 12 minutes past 12. I'm going to stop now, uh, slightly ahead of schedule. Uh, thank you for that. And I'm going to stop sharing now. Thanks very much, Des. I think certainly the group i was involved with i think we there were some really interesting things coming out um one thing um that seems to be coming out or well, two things seem to be coming out in the points there's first one is people would really like some hints tips and so on on basic fixes and i mean simon in our group for example was saying existing photos into ThingLink, although that does have licensing issues or into google earth so, for example, if someone like Nikki, who made that fantastic resource, could write a how-to that people could start with, that could be really, really useful. But also that um, there sort of seems to be a trend thing coming out for the, um, yes, thank you, Nikki, that would be great. Nikki's offering to share one, uh, a Google Earth example. Um, but that longer term plans might include um, a joint field trip so that pick a destination, people go together with the idea of both creating a resource, but also of learning and peer teaching how to do it. Um, you know, like if you go on something like a QRA trip, you learn about absolutely everything in the environment because so many people have opinions and to do that and capture it as a virtual field trip. And yeah, you might need funding, but that would be something you could apply for funding to do as a training school. Yeah, that that's Mike's all good. Um, that sounds in, interesting, and it's broadly aligned with uh, our discussions in our breakout group. And of the four options, 
Um, I think there was some sort of suggestion we ought to be wary of uh, one or two people trying to do everything. And it's, uh, as you were just saying, it's more about um, building, capac building capacity yeah. through empowering others. Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, that, that sounds a naff thing to say, but it, it, it is it is true. It's about letting yeah. people know, uh, helping them develop appropriate tools. Um, sometimes those tools might be free, uh, certainly easy to use. And yeah, give them a range of approaches and, and see what works. So I think that's the way forward rather than yeah. VIPs taking on big uh, projects that we're trying to develop all ourselves, which yeah. doesn't exclude us doing uh, one or two big ones, but, um, but there we go. It's also uh, worth maybe pointing out that um, there are places that a lot of a lot of universities go, like the Tabernas Badlands, or the as Daniel mentioned in the comments, or um, Malam Tarn. I mean, how many people groups go to Malam Tarn, for example? And so there might be a lot of photographs and so on out there. So actually, saying let's build a um, Google Earth resource like Nikki talked about that potentially you could put one together in a short term response for a landscape that actually people know and have a lot of notes on because I mean the level of research needed to write the sort of detail Nikki did but that would be something that people could do communally uh yeah whole group go to Tenerife yeah we do Tenerife and we do a roller in Hull as well and Graham Swindle's caravan at Flamborough Head yes <laughs> the Yorkshire coast is well known but so that might be also be a project that we could do that wasn't one person but that was people contributing their bits and pieces so it might be something to uh, say ask Nikki about possibly writing a guide to how you do the google earth stuff because I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy because we have our first years do it but I don't teach that so I don't know how it works but the ickle firsties do it um Yes, lots and lots of positive comments coming here that uh, uh, votes for Tenerife. Lots of lots of people go to Tenerife and doing a virtual. Uh, yeah, we uh, you know people have been going so potentially putting together some of those. Does that sound like something we could do? I'm happy to go to Tenerife. We don't take our students there, but uh, I'm happy to help out colleagues who do. For not yeah. selfish reasons at all. And now we've got votes for Iceland and Scotland. Well, well, you know I want to do Scotland, Althea. That's a silly question. <laughs> Always want to do something nice and boggy. But that sounds like a really positive way to take forward. But I do notice that we are now two minutes into our comfort break. So um, I think there's some fantastic energy and ideas to take forward there. Have you got what you needed, Des, or wanted or planned? Uh, yes, I have. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to everybody for getting involved and sharing your views. Um, it'll take a little bit to look through all the comments and just uh, there's one or just to be clear, if you filled out, completed the, um, the, the Google form, uh, we will get back to you uh, with, your, with the different suggestions uh, and we'll see how we can move things forward. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone. So if uh, Kim put up the break slide, we will now take a not a 10 minute fill up the teapot or visit the bathroom if you had too much in your teapot to start with um and we'll see you back here at 12 45 yes this is the first one is a longer one so that people can grab lunch and so on whatever you need to do so we'll see you back at 12 45. hello everyone Sorry, just finishing up my lunch and looking at my email and slightly losing track of time, but that's not unusual. Um, I think I think most people are. Yeah, looks like a reasonable number is back. Um, so for workshop two, the main um, scope of it is the smaller pieces. So where the virtual field trip is big immersive environment workshop two is thinking about the bits and pieces the things that are all lying around the maker room um, so we're thinking not um, specifically about the use of them in teaching that's coming in the workshop three but in this workshop we're thinking about um, the things mostly the things generated by work, working groups three and four 
so things so and collated and the things collated by working group one so i will just if i still can briefly share my older slides da, da, da. yes so we've got a what i identified in the thing was that we had questions about organizing who is doing what about resources around teaching so not specifically teaching but the bits and pieces data sets and this photo gallery idea which as i say really needs someone to take it on um the website structure was generally improved we had possible reorganizations but the main focus uh, for what we wanted to explore here is about these small pieces and particularly about how to capture the how what sort of mechanism will help the small set of people we've got um, who are organized who are have are stepped up to be coordinators and organizers to capture the enthusiasm and interest of the much larger number of people who signed up to the original group uh, we have a list of over 160 people now who have actively asked to get mailing sent the people who ticked that they'd be happy to talk or they'd be happy to share some photographs on one of the original forms how do we capture that um and what do people think would be a good way to organize that because so far it's all been very ad hoc we're looking to develop a system um so those are that's the sort of thing we'd like people to discuss in this workshop so what i suggest we do is that if Nikki, if, if Kim, sorry, is in charge of breakout groups, if we could maybe go into a breakout group, Kim, for about 25 minutes to discuss the small resources and the spreadsheet that people had sent around this morning, the way the categories, the way it's organised, and how we might capture that enthusiasm and, fight and um, interest and encourage people to submit things. Does that sort of make sense? Well, nobody's saying no. Yes, Jane. Yeah, Jane, if you could add the key points, to, could you add the key points to the chat there? Because then the chat can be seen in all the breakout rooms. Quite an excellent idea, Kim. Because the, the screen sharing doesn't quite work in them, which is a bit of a pain. That is a very good point. Let me stop sharing my screen, find the chat again, which has hidden itself, right? Um, great. Um, so one is comments on the spreadsheet, two is how to encourage contributions and help. Just getting involved in the small ways that, that build up to the bigger whole. um also uh three uh photo gallery etc what else are we missing and to ask uh each group to appoint someone who will take some notes so that when we come back to the plenary we can say can we have your top one or two comments on point one and it can be fed back make sense and we're 10, 15 minutes again, Jen, a little um, bit longer. Make it 20 minutes. 20 minutes up. That brings us back at 10 past and we then have 20 minutes to round up. So that sounds about right. Brilliant. All right, then I will open all the rooms now. Enjoy. So let's start with comments on the spreadsheet. Um, if someone from each group could type a couple of comments one comment into the chat um that would be brilliant um i'm just i i am now actually looking for my list of when the next thing starts so that i don't get us completely off schedule because that would be really embarrassing as i created the schedule um right yes So 
my first comment is we want it up on the web so that it can then be rated. Um, and yeah, I say that plan by Friday is to get a version. Probably, possibly what was sent around to you, possibly a, a, a more up to date one updated. And that's actually maybe something we're going to need to bear in mind is, is a schedule for updating that. Because we know we're going to have another little surge of resources uh, as a result of people checking the various groups websites. Oh, sorry. Spreadsheets. There were too many computer words. Uh, so feedback was mostly seems to be about presentation and organization. Uh, which is useful. So that it's a bit of, it's a little bit overwhelming and what do the colors mean. Um, definitely a comment I've seen with more than one group is can is the one we share should have the filters turned on so that you can use the drop downs in the from the column headings to just very easily pull out a subset of the data. Um, and we agree that's really useful because it, it that stop makes it a bit less daunting. In group, the group I was in, um, there was some discussion that it would be really useful if there was some accompanying, um, maybe some accompanying data or even narrative in the second sheet um, that said something about how many resources are in each category, which is the kind of not very thrilling work, but something that would be really great for the interns to do. Um, so that, um, so that uh, you could kind of almost see where the gaps are. Um, let me see. Uh, tidying up the comments section, because at the moment, video length and description and general comments are all kind of tangled up and having video length in one column um, and so on. So to separate out different things. Um, yeah, so further categorizing group four is also common here uh, like, um, categorizing the information. Um, Jill said she had problems with filtering. Yes, we can work on that. Um, Eileen suggested it would be useful to have a mechanism for adding comments on the resources. Um, and also that um, the level of resources and yet that's already something we want to add a column. We've mentioned we want to add a column about how big it is in terms of challenges for students getting on and a column about whether it's limited to Macs or PCs or computer only or mobile or whatever. Um, but we also want to take advantage of having student interns by getting them to add a comment about the student view. And it would be good to maybe also be able to put some things on because the trouble is deciding what's introductory or advanced is always going to be a bit arbitrary because what's introductory for an environmental archaeology for, for a so you know environmental geography student might be advanced for a, a student taking environmental archaeology and this sort of thing um and simon um has pointed out that how to guides are emerging as an important theme so something both to highlight in the spreadsheet itself and perhaps a brief how to of using the spreadsheet to make it a bit less daunting um and yes um one group's commented that maybe adding some location information when that comes in so how to anything else on how it's organized no. well can i ask people to start um typing in responses to the um second question from their groups um which was about how in get encouraging contributions and helping people get involved in small ways um, whilst trying to, because I think there's been a lot of people who are like in principle keen to kind of get involved or contribute material they've already got, um, but have either kind of felt daunted by how much it might be or sat there and thought, well, everybody has a handout on that. Why would they want mine or been a little, um, or just kind of sat there waiting for to you know what the gaps were. Um, so if that was the second question, so if, if groups did think about that. If they could uh, 
type something. Um, so a couple of comments that have come in, that I'll sort of um, pick up from the idea that um, Elizabeth, so yeah, a couple of themes coming out. One is this idea of asking, reaching out and asking for specific things and possibly even specific people. So, um, for example, if we get that data that there's 150 resources related to lakes and only three related to Aeolian sediments, who do we know who does Aeolian? Did somebody offer something Aeolian in the original, one of the original forms? Or can we put out a group and say, has anyone uh, specific questions like that? Because I know, you know you'd be far more likely um, to respond if somebody said, do you know any specific resources on you know, Scottish woodland ecology than if somebody just said, have you got any resources? Because it's an easier task. And I think, um, where were we? Martin, um, Martin put it well when he said it's, it's the idea of it avoids survey fatigue. It's so much easier to ask people for a small specific thing. They feel more obliged to answer it and maybe more competent to answer it. So actually, I, um, a specific task might be to find those gaps in this big resource collection and then someone has to identify and write emails to individual people or to small groups. Um, the other thing that's come out obviously is um, the um, communication side, so helping people be aware that VIPS existed and of what we have and in some ways um i think hope that that's something we can accelerate as so some comments yesterday about how um the website isn't a very good advert yet because it's all this is coming this is coming once we have the spreadsheet and so on on it we'll have something to something concrete to offer you know if you go to the website you won't see this is coming you'll see something you can use um so that might help and yeah communication is going to be really important and that may be um again it's a small job but it might be one that somebody could specifically volunteer to keep an eye on um we have already lined up um for example a couple of things about this workshop will be going out on different bes blogs um and we've talked about writing um short pieces for other outlets but that's again a job somebody can can offer to do um right what else have we got making the website interactive yes um the other page we wanted to release we want to release on friday is a link where you can put in a link or a resource you recommend just on the web page to have a, have a place to submit them um they need sorting out and i think also um jill plunkett jill's here jill you have a you made a version of the website of the web sheet of the spread sheet that people could put stuff in and, and send to make it easy for them to contribute didn't you we had the collection template which is a blank yeah. one so who did that go out to um i think it originally went out to everyone but it went out in like may so did, did it just go out to the those who signed up with yeah. the interest to working group one rather than to the entire community i don't remember i honestly don't remember i think i think so jill i think I it think went out to those who were a part of working group one and right. that was that kind of remit to, to then collect those resources so shall we add that to the post we could add that to the post workshop mail that goes to everybody who signed up at all so that then the links in a resource it, the links in a place so that might help as well because that will make it again it's about i think there's a common theme here about making it easier for people to communicate um yes yeah, so, so working group one can discuss some of the suggestions for the additional columns and the organization of the spreadsheet yeah. um, revise the template and then send that out to everybody yeah Brilliant. Um, yeah, and Simon Simon points out that actually this is probably a good time to ask because lots of people are 
either realizing they need stuff now and may benefit and will want to look at the spreadsheet to see if they can fill a gap or have spent the summer developing stuff um, that they may realize they can share. And as try, I have had a couple of emails and there's at least one person attending today Adele, I can see down there, is attending because um, her supervisor wants to, has developed teaching materials and is wondering if this is a place to share them. And the answer to that is obviously yes. Um, but the, yeah, this is, this, is, this is probably a really good time to ask. Um, so it's good time. Um, oh, and Jill's saying that if you, um, as a quick fix, if you copy what you, if you copy the sheet now that you've been sent now into a new Excel sheet, then you can turn the filters on uh, and sort the columns. Um, and that perhaps what we, in some ways, making a list of these tasks um, and then asking people to do smaller pieces of it um, is probably going is is going to be able to help it to work. And yeah, I think that that's really a good point, Eileen. Um, so I would summarize that as um, that we want to look at how to guides to make it easy to use stuff. We want to look at what we've got in gaps and rather than expecting working groups to pick it up, actually contacting individuals who may know of existing resources and then lots of comments around communication and the importance of getting that right and at the same time there's people who will be doing certain resources in semester one um, that will be ready for semester two and and yeah it would be fantastic to include those as coming soon resources so to have a, almost a coming soon page on the website or sec certainly section in the newsletter uh, for everyone who's interested um, and Adele, who said is talking about resources, is talking about hosting. So the way we've been thinking about this, we're kind of dividing it into two kinds of submissions. So the collation has all been about web links. And so far, a lot of this discussion, I think, has still been about filling gaps with existing links. But the second category of contributions is, which we've been calling contributions, are concrete things that need to be hosted somewhere. So some people keep things on their university repository um, and that's great. That's that's freely available or on their labs outward looking website. And in that case, they can just submit a link. But then there's materials that we create ourselves and maybe don't have somewhere to host. So there's an issue with Copol at the moment. I'm having to say email me because my university repository is still after six years trying to work out how they want to accommodate software that's downloadable so i'm just sending dropbox links dropbox links out so we want a more structured way of doing that um des for the first workshop uh created a private youtube channel for the project and um so to, to put up some of the talks and things and where the plan is that we'll continue we will basically have a private youtube channel which means that uh, the video is hosted on YouTube and it has the advantages of YouTube in that you can do closed captioning and that sort of thing. Um, but because it's private, it's not so it's not pulled up in a general search. And then we can link to that from the website. So um, we certainly want to talk with people about how to do that. Um, and we and for documents, PDFs, that sort of resource, um, a, web, a WordPress website, the kind we're using, comes with a free media storage area. And if you can, if you subscribe to WordPress, you get a much bigger media storage area, which is basically cloud storage. And again, the plan is to build that. Uh, we're planning to make an application to the Quaternary Research Association Outreach Fund, which would include uh, a few years of host uh, of paid WordPress so that we could have the site uh, with the bigger storage capacity and then take it on beyond that. Um, Simon's also, uh, uh, Dave Horn and Simon have, commented about, have commented about Wikimedia Commons, particularly as a source for the photo gallery that we're looking at making. Um, so what we want to do is set up our own areas in the cloud where any member can upload them so that people like Dell's group don't individually have to come up with the solutions. Um, 
that's also a part of the point um, of what I mentioned on the first day about encouraging people to uh, follow and use Creative Commons because that gives us a really good IPR route. Um, so one advantage apparently of Wikimedia is that we could set up VIPs Wikimedia space um, and then everyone could upload their own photos so you wouldn't have to send it to someone who then uploads it. Um, Des, have I got the YouTube bit right there? Uh, yes, yes you have Jen, thanks. Great. So does that sort of answer your question, Del? Adele? Yes, great. Um, but again, this is a, this is partly about communication, um, and also about having having a protocol, having a how to that says when you upload your material, tag it in this way, or if you want to upload it, contact this person. Um, so what I've set up so far to go out on Friday is is a web page on our website that has if you've got a web, if you've got a web link you want to share here's a very short form to stick it in and if you've got another resource that you want us to host here's a short form in which you can tell us what it is and then we'll put you in touch with the right person to help you upload it um really as a stopgap um so that's also something i mean this idea of wikimedia is common if somebody would like to volunteer to just create one and write a quick how-to to advise people and maybe um work out what tabs what tags would be useful um that's um that hopefully would be that's a small job but it would be a huge contribution so that's maybe something to think about if you're thinking i'd like to get involved but you know i i don't want to commit myself for a year or i i only have a certain amount of time or, or whatever um i've completely forgotten even what the third point was so now I have to scroll back up through the chat, which is very full. Thank you very much. I'm going to have fun taking this apart. Oh, the photo gallery, the teaching materials. Are there any other sort of categories of stuff that would be really useful that we're missing? So if there are any categories or any other um, comments people have, just quickly, because we are having made all that fuss about timekeeping i've just realized we are in our last minute do we have instruction materials for what helen oh do you mean how to use how to use software and stuff sorry jane i'll just save myself yeah. the typing um yeah just the instruction materials for software or anything that you know handbooks yeah or any, any instruction materials really i i yeah. sorry i wasn't sure whether you said that one or not so that was one that i probably gabbled over it but yeah definitely that's an important one on the list uh oh and <laughs> viv has commented that some biographies of um significant figures or, or at least a set of links to them that's actually really true because um one of the things that i think that we were encouraged to do briefly was to um try and humanize papers and the whole production of knowledge thing by where possible saying not just this is a paper but this is a paper by this person here's a picture of them um and that's also particularly potentially useful in terms of um biographies martha apparently know something about that martha would you like to something about an iqua book hold on i've gone into my kitchen hold on there is an iqua book martha can use uh on what on on sorry i've missed the last oh, one. martha it was the um you know the iqua um book on women in paleo yeah yeah, and then there's there's a there's a lot of information as well on um, Irish quaternary scientists, and then there's information on who's who in quaternary. Yeah, from, yeah, from who? Um, there were those fabulous posters, weren't there? Yeah, to their IQA. Yeah, they belong. Yeah. You talked to Jill about that, I suppose. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we did for Inqua relating to people who were 
involved in quaternary in the past, involved in quaternary now, and um, in the UK and Ireland. So there's um. That's a great idea, actually. Information, yeah. So um, there's also there's a, there's been a bit of a push to do um, you know, wiki edits of Wikipedia for uh, female geoscientists. Um, so we could also see who they we could see both who they've touched on and who's around because it would be great to kind of build a diverse list and obviously not ignore the white men because they've been important too but you know oh yeah they've had enough yeah <laughs> well yeah but so if, if we're thinking about compiling biographies yeah, uh, yeah. i don't yeah. think you you know you don't you don't actually get to throw out von post just because oh. people <laughs> Yeah. No, also, definitely. there is that fabulous picture of him wandering around with no shirt in the middle of a swamp, um, which we all use in our lectures, <laughs> and it's just entertaining. Um, great. Um, so, yeah, just, no, I, well, there, there is a lot of there's there's a lot of information that was brought together for Inqua, all right, on um, biographies yeah. and stuff. So, and people like Trailblazers have done an amazing job for archaeology, and Meriel's just yeah. met Lisa Lodwick. Again, maybe this is something we could create a task just to have a quick look and see what's there. And that might be the kind of thing that would be a good way of involving early career people as well, would be to maybe do one of these, um, let's all get together and edit wiki pages <laughs> to make sure the representation's better. But, uh, yeah, Viv Jones, famously the wives of these guys did the counting. Oh yes, I am so jealous of the people whose wives did their counting on their um and their writing and their typing who typed the manuscripts and edited it <laughs> brilliant um great um it is now a lot's coming in in the chat but it is now 25 to 2 and our next session starts at quarter to two our next workshop so can i suggest we take a 10 minute break but keep throwing things in the chat and we'll capture these and um find a way to get them out okay um, and thank you again for all the enthusiasm. <laughs> right, I make it quarter to two. Um, so that means it's time to hand over to uh, Karen and her team for the uh, Working Group 5 who uh, are leading the workshop on uh, teaching. Okay, so um, hopefully everyone can now see my screen. There we go. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so um, Working Group 5 has been kind of focusing on the pedagogy aspects of um, the, the various resources as we went through yesterday when we when we did our presentation. But for anyone who wasn't here yesterday, wasn't able to join us yesterday, um, the group is generally focusing on trying to think about, you know, the pedagogy, the pedagogy behind the resources that we're using. Um, and one of our media tasks was thinking about how to move from kind of, you know, the normal inverted commas, normal way of teaching to using online resources, particularly in a hurry. So yesterday, one of the things that we presented was, um, you know, what's available now and how can you swap some of these available online resources into a virtual environment, but still keep students engaged, still have them, you know, manipulating data um, and trying to kind of keep that engagement with the students so definitely not a question that was answered but that's kind of what we're what we're trying to do in part the other part of what we're trying to do is to um assess how useful this project is so um we talked a little bit about the longitudinal study that we'll be launching in the next couple of weeks um so that'll go out in the newsletter i guess when we have that up and running as well um, and also thinking about the kind of things that are particularly urgent for people as well. Um, and things like keeping students engaged, dealing with teaching online, these are the things that have popped up a fair bit. So um, I don't particularly want to spend a lot of time with me talking. Um, could do that, but 
it's uh, it's not a challenge at all for me. Um, but it's also not perhaps the most valuable way for us to spend our time. So I will put all of these into the chat so that everyone has a copy of them. I appreciate that this looks like quite a lot. It is, um, which is the other reason for me not to do a huge amount of talking, but to hand over to the, um, the subgroups. But these are the things that came out yesterday as being particularly uh, of interest um, and maybe interest and or concern, depending on um, what way you want to think about it. So um, particularly, we want to know what we can do going forward. So what is the best use of working group five? What are the most useful things that we can be um, trying to engage the community with and also trying to kind of answer or provide resources for these kind of things? Um, so this is what we've come up with to kind of have our discussion around. So uh, they're kind of separated into four groups of questions, um, four sort of topics. So what are the concerns about teaching in this academic year? Uh, try not to spend all of your time on that, although again I imagine that could be quite easily done. Um, and what are the gaps in terms of resources that are most urgent? So what, what do you think we need in terms of teaching, in terms of pedagogy? What are your concerns and what's the most urgent need? Um, then um, I, I feel like we may already have an answer to this, but is there an interest in small groups meeting to consider um, semester one teaching issues? So would you be interested in, in doing that? Um, and is there any interest in an end of semester one or pre-semester two meeting? So this would be entirely focused on pedagogy, what worked, what didn't work, um, and what can we feed forward into semester two? Um, then in terms of subgroups from the current working group five, so kind of thinking about moving forward, um, is the, their interest in a general pedagogy that works and doesn't work, a kind of a, a coffee or gin group, uh, as was suggested yesterday, depending on how things are going. Um, an action research subgroup, so I know there are some people who are really, really interested in this, um, and that would, you know, are there any more people who are really interested in this? And you know, these are the ideas of groups that maybe would meet once a month. Um, and also a GIS subgroup. Um, do not ask me questions about GIS. As far as I am concerned, it is witchcraft. Um, so, but you know, that's the whole point is that if someone, if you are like me and suddenly thrust into having to teach GIS and having to do it in an unfamiliar way, um, how do you do that? Uh, I, I think I'd resign. Um, so, and then the last one is facilitating pedagogic studies. So if you are someone who, for whom you know you're teaching, you've been doing it for a long time, but actually producing pedagogic studies and running them, if that's new to you, what could we do to help with that? Um, and that's something that I feel personally quite strongly about, because if it wasn't for a very helpful colleague, um, I, I wouldn't have had a clue where to start. So what can we do to help? Um, and then for our longitudinal study, which is going to be looking at where we're at now, and then resurveying uh, academic staff towards the end of the academic year, how did it all go? So essentially, what do we think is going to happen and then what actually happened? Um, is that a, a study that you would be prepared to um, feed into in some context? So I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to ask him to put us into our breakout sessions. And again, if someone could take notes, um, and if we could just see what people feel around these things. If this is too much for, for your group to talk about, because it is quite a lot, pick your favorite one. Um, that's, that's fine. Any information that we can get is helpful. So thank you. Okay, welcome back everyone. I think we've everyone. Um, so, okay, so, um, Matt or um, Muriel, would either of you like to maybe summarize some of what you've said in your groups and, and then I'll do. Um, yeah, sure. I've noticed that Muriel's typed incredibly quickly. Yeah, I was just um, noticing that as well. That's like, that, that's <laughs> very impressive, putting the rest of us to shame. Yeah, so we, um, we talked about um, firstly finding out what people were teaching in semester one. Um, so uh, Jane has an environmental change module that she does the practical part of that's running synchronously with a colleague doing the theory part. So this is a very immediate concern for her. Um, and uh, the, the other people that were concerned about um, diatom in particular practicals. Um, so some discussion about maybe trying to speed up getting diatoms onto copal um, or ways that uh, individuals could extract 
um, diagonal pictures online in a, a copal similar kind of way. Um, we also spoke about uh, engagement quite a lot, um, varied experiences from last year um, and turning to online teaching with student engagement. Um, generally, fairly common experience that forums don't seem to generate very much engagement. Um, things like polls perhaps do a bit more. Um, Jane again mentioned something called the big blue button that uh, enables students to show whether they've understood a concept or not. Um, so during during live synchronous sessions, that's quite a useful tool. Um, what else? Uh, um, oh, we also talked about uh, what, what we can do with um, kind of completely asynchronous teaching as well. Um, and discussed the possibility of maybe collating other people's experiences, building up a, a collation of people's experiences as semester one goes on, and possibly working um, some of the things that were on your slides in the presentation yesterday into suggested um, suggested lesson plans really for synchronous or asynchronous and possibly for a variety of levels, looking at level seven teaching as well. Um, so that's masters for anyone who doesn't use that terminology um yeah i think that, that about covers it okay that's great um muriel i'm still typing so would you like to yeah um in uh breakout room three some of the teaching concerns and um, the biggest are the time pressures and um, so sometimes thinking about for what might have previously been a single lecture that there is an expectation or a feeling you should be delivering multiple files so sometimes a presentation and some sound and other files and resources to accompany that. So just the time it takes to put all these things together. And um, some people have to develop brand new modules, which is scary enough anyway, and then having to do all this on top of it. And um, things like people who would have gone in field work and have been doing maybe the same thing for several years are able to stand in any mountain and talk for two hours, having to write that all that down again and put it into a different format, that takes time that maybe people hadn't anticipated. Um, basic confidence in recording yourself speaking um, and doing it to a blank screen um, and people are just finding that hard and that makes it take longer as well. And then some of the things um, we were talking about and I'll, I'll go and talk about it in resource gaps, but for the file sizes for recorded lectures. So sometimes understanding the basics, lots of us don't know very well how to do compressed files um, for teaching and separate out audio from video and things like that. I think Quite a few people have been teaching in around March and April and have started to do this. Lots of people weren't teaching around then. So this is the first time they're going into it. So all of those people need supports as well. And one of the ideas we suggested was maybe doing a survey, a brief survey. So this is what our work group, the pedagogic uh, work group could do, a very brief survey um, to assess and eventually share the different methods of recording lectures, how to separate video and audio files, how to compress files and being cognizant also that certain institutions will have certain requirements. Um, so to understand, we may say this is best practice, but people might not be allowed to do it. So in a variety of formats, perhaps to do that. Um, and then in some of the resource gaps, the one that kept coming up again was basic instructions on how to record a lecture well um, and, and how to put that out there. Um, people getting worried about technology when they should be focusing on the content. And I think everyone's getting a bit scared about that now about how to do it right. So if we could provide some advice on that. And then also advice, basic advice on how to guide students through accessing resources. People saying about how students coming back to them, how do I open a zip file and do all these different kinds of things. So it's very basic level stuff, um, some of this. Um, we were talking about teaching chronology and um, modeling and things like that, how that can be difficult. And the, one of the things we finished up with was talking about how to build a student cohort. So for many of us, we've been relying on field trips to really bring students together at certain times in the year um, and how that can be difficult to do, perhaps in a virtual field trip, not impossible, but we just need to think again about how to do that. In terms of the meetings, then significant interest, very significant interest in having maybe coffee mornings or just meetings as we go through semester one, maybe one at the end of semester one to see how we did and continuing on um, and just talking about best practice and people's experience of what went right and wrong.
Great, thank you. So I think a lot of that has overlapped with um, some of what we were talking as well. Um, I think there's, there's definitely very clear um, interest in having some sort of a kind of a support coffee morning. Um, so I think working group five will look into that and, and try to see how we can facilitate that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that that'll be close to the top of our agenda, I think, for the next meeting. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of um, a lot of interest in that. Um, there was also interest in, you know, potentially having a later meeting where we do a what worked and what didn't work in semester one and a kind of a feed forward into semester two. Um, I think I think that's a really good idea. I think timing might be a bit of a challenge, but I think, you know, we can we can think about that um, for maybe December. Um, but again, we, we can, yeah, we can bring that back to the, the wider group and see um, what people think. But I think a lot of support for that. Um, suggested that uh, a GIS support group might be beyond the remit of the group. Um, I don't really have an opinion on that. I, I just hope I never have to deal with it myself. So, um, but again, something that we can we can think about and we can put it out to the membership and see as well what um, what people think, I think. Um, then uh, let me see. Um, yeah, there was a lot on. Uh, we talked about um, pedagogic research and uh, in particular kind of trying to support people to move into it. Um, and one of the things I mean, it, it could we could have some sessions maybe of the coffee morning where it's like you know do you want to talk about uh how to get into pedagogic research and we could just signpost that maybe that's what that week uh will attempt to focus on but i think there's there's definitely interest in that um maybe a kind of a sort of a not quite mentoring but just support helping people to um to try and and do that if that's what they want to do um, there was also a discussion about action research where it kind of turned out that I'm not really sure what it is. Um, so I'll be bouncing that back to, to Steve. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, you know, in, in the basic sense, kind of a vague idea about it, but whether or not that's what people want to do. Um, and I definitely need someone who is much more embedded in um, action research, uh, certainly than I am, to be able to talk about it in a fluent manner. Um, but something to, to think about that could be of interest. Um, then we also talked about um, kind of making it clear when things are about something that is pragmatic. Um, so thinking about communication again, so this, you know, if we're having a coffee morning, this is about a pragmatic thing. This is about something didn't work or I need to know how to do something or I did a thing that worked. Um, and signposting that versus maybe signposting something that is going to be aspirational that we want to talk about something uh, maybe more long term um, so just so that people it was a, a point well made that you know again communication um, is is key so that people know what they're um, getting into um, then also student engagement um, from both sides so uh, and I think this is something uh, Matt correct me if I'm wrong but I think this featured quite heavily uh, in in the poll as well um, that you know people are concerned about the students engaging and then also whether or not we know that they're engaging so the kind of both sides of it because they could be sitting there going nothing you know like in a lecture you just maybe don't always get a response from someone but actually they've really enjoyed it and they've taken it in, but they're just sitting there with their poker face on for whatever reason. Um, and that this may be even more difficult to um, to get through when it's it's virtual teaching. So yes, yeah, student engagement and our understanding of their engagement um, was highlighted as a concern. And then something else that came up was uh, decolonizing the curriculum um, and kind of thinking about how to bring that in as well. Um, so thinking about how we can add that in to uh, pedagogy, it may be it even needs to be a, a broader um, a thing for, for VIPs to, to think about um, how to include decolonization across um, the, the resources. Um, and, you know, kind of then also thinking about, you know, with for, a, for example, just taking the guest lectures that, you know, everyone who's doing a guest lecture isn't white or isn't um of 
one or the other genders or you know these not everyone has the same accent you know just making sure that there's um a genuine diversity there um and i'm making sure that that's and i think that i do think that will happen because i think um people are conscious of it but it was um it was a discussion point um does anyone we've got three minutes left um is there anything else that anyone would like to um to raise or do we want to go for coffee people have just been making suggestions about how to reduce the file sizes um and reducing um the upload several smaller files and things like that so we can yeah. we think about that when we're developing if we develop guidelines or something um, and also thinking about if we're doing action research um, this semester about the ethics in individual institutions, um, which is something I know we've been thinking about. Yeah. We will have to get approvals perhaps before um, anything takes place there as well. Yeah, that was one of the things that, that did come up when we were talking about kind of particularly supporting people who are just kind of maybe trying to move into pedagogic research um, because some universities just really annoying about it and it's like oh you've you know you've not followed this exact step-by-step -step procedure so no you can't do it for that um and and some are very responsive very flexible that you send in your thing and they'll give you an answer a couple of weeks later others are you know they do it a couple of times a year maybe because they don't have the staff or or whatever so it's a very institution specific thing but what it's not is a journal specific thing and more and more journals won't publish things unless you have ethical approval. So I think it's really, really important to be aware of. Anything else? Cat admiration in the chat, admiring James Cat. Yes. <laughs> okay, I think um, with that then, um, thank you everyone for um, engaging and for being really supportive and for um, having some fantastic ideas and points and you know things that, that we've not thought about um, it's been really really good um, and I think we have a, a break um, now let me just check yes we do um, so I think it's back at 2.45 um, so I guess Kim will throw off the slide uh, and thanks very much everyone yeah, um, I'm just going to throw up a slide for the break, but actually I think if I can, I'm just going to throw up a couple of logo ideas that have been floating around to the oh, wider yeah. group. So if you've got a couple of minutes before you go and get a cup of tea or when you come back just a little bit early, I'll throw up the slides so you can see some of the new stuff. I've, I've put some stuff together over lunch as well, so um, it's not always as good as polished as it should be. But if any thoughts and comments are welcome on that, so I'll put those up now and enjoy your cups of tea and whatever. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for the work on those, Kim. Um, they're still in progress, but they're starting to get there, I think. I think they are, yes. Um, lots of comments coming in. I think mean, the one on the top right is a, is a new contender. Um, nice one. I, uh, there's also a comment about how um, paleo icons equal things like mammoths. Um, I should maybe try and network the mammoth, like a mammoth <laughs> in a network or something. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea. I quite like the idea of a network mammoth. I suppose the issue with animals, with the critters, is always that first of all we've tried to define paleo sciences loosely, and they do kind of, I guess, tie us to, to certain kinds of paleo science. And I guess the other thing is actually just that there are there are a lot of groups that use paleo critters. Um, but yes, there's quite. I, I would say overall there seem to be quite a lot of comments in favour of top left. Um, Rob says top left with a mammoth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Well, comments will continue to be taken and thank you to Kim and to everyone else who's uh, worked on those.
just need to avoid trailer bikes, Jane. <laughs> I didn't. I never drew a trailer bike. And cool as they are, yeah, we we did have. There was an earlier version with a trailer bike for various reasons. Um, anyway, this is our fourth workshop, and I will attempt to remain focused for another hour. Um, and if I go too far off course, can somebody uh, poke me, virtually speaking? Um, so this is workshop four, and our purpose in workshop four is to think about what happens next. Um, so the, where's my list? So um, it, we thought it'd be useful if first we have a short summary from each of workshops one and three about the main points. Um, have the workshop leads developed something for that, or do you just want to speak off cuff for five minutes? Uh, Karen, Des, or I think I'm I'm probably happy to to speak. Um, I didn't get very far with um, <laughs> writing doing anything together. Um, um, uh, yeah, I'm happy to speak off the cuff as well. I started then forgot, so there we go. Well, that's good because I did nothing at all because I know I I we never really planned who was leading workshop two and it kind of yeah ended up being me but i didn't really notice if you see what i mean um so uh, uh des would you like to say something first about what we did uh, uh, yeah so um this is going to be short uh I, I it won't last five minutes unless i speak really slowly um thank you for everybody who participated this morning the virtual field trip workshops very helpful I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go um, the main takeaway, the most important thing for work group two, I believe, is, I'm going to use that uh, phrase again, building capacity by empowering others to produce their own resources. And we can do so providing both technical and pedagogic support and guidance. I guess there's some overlap with uh, uh, working group five there. So there'll be how-to guides. Uh, I guess there'll be maybe one-on-one -on -one and support as well. That's not to say uh, there won't be one or two perhaps slightly bigger projects. Uh, there were some suggestions of collaborative projects, particularly for popular field course uh, areas. Uh -huh. Den Reef was mentioned, Arola was mentioned, one or two other places, um, including places in the UK as well. So we're certainly open to that, but absolutely the most important thing is about building capacity and getting people locally uh, to produce uh, resources. A range of other things which in my incomplete uh, PowerPoint slide I've just got other stuff dot dot dot. Um, there is there was some detail in the chat that I have recorded and I'll get back to and I'd also like to reassure those people who completed the form uh, looking for you know suggesting new virtual field trip resources I will get back to you and appreciate that some of you are, are here today so thanks everybody. I just want to leave it at that so it's more about supporting other people, how to guide, that sort of thing, but maybe with one or two bigger um, projects in there as well. It's about being sustainable, I think, and not finding that we're seeing, we're the ones having to take it, take the lead and do everything ourselves. And that's it really. Thanks, Des. And that actually fits really nicely with some of the things that seem to come out of, um, workshop two. Uh, people seem generally uh, happy with the project and to think it was useful, um, made some useful comments about how to amend it. Um, but the main thing that seemed to me coming out was about how it was about making it actually both easy and appealing to people to contribute new materials. So again, finding ways to empower everyone to be involved. Um, and that's also something that um, we're going to want to think about how that will continue while we've got the interns and then after we have interns um, to sort that out. So that work is just the beginning of um, transitioning from just collecting stuff ourselves to actually reaching out and making the, getting everybody involved. Um, but again, that same idea about empowering everyone to make contributions and to use the materials. Um, I really think that's all I, I wanted to say in summary of that. Karen? Um, yes, yeah, so I think, it, again, it kind of um, dovetails back into similar themes of kind of, you know, 
trying to find support ways to be supportive um, and also to kind of get people to to be involved um, the big concerns are student engagement and time pressure um, I think one of the the issues for some people is the idea you know that I used to give an hour lecture and now we've got 15 20 minutes of, of recorded lecture and maybe a task and kind of maybe just feeling comfortable with that um that you know that's that's absolutely fine as long as it's still meeting the learning outcomes and um that, that that's okay you don't have to you don't it's not you're not teaching in the same way and i think for some people maybe that's um a bit of a it's a bit of a challenge for me in some ways to get my head around that so uh, and i think there's plenty of people who feel the same way um one of the things that's come out as well is again more of the like basic how to's um you know just getting to grips with uh technology um and then also you know supporting um people who want to get into pedagogic research so i think that's something that um you know we'll we'll look at taking forward but i think the really big thing is that there's clearly um an appetite and a need for a bit of a community as well um, and that maybe the the kind of idea of a coffee morning can can fill that need because you know we're all missing not being able to run down the corridor and go ah the computer's doing something weird help oh. or you know just like going in and going oh my god that class was just a nightmare everything that could go wrong did go wrong um so i think everyone is missing that support um so i think to me I think that's probably the most important thing maybe for uh, for us to push forward with in terms of pedagogy is to try and um, provide, you know, a bit of a, a space where people can have those conversations in an informal and a supportive way. Um, and then obviously we have the um, longitudinal study. So people were, uh, I think, supportive of that. So hopefully you'll all be getting emails about that in, in due course. Um, I think that's really it. I mean, I think for me, the big thing that's come out of it is um, particularly the need for support to help people who want to engage with pedagogic research, the need for um, finding a way to monitor uh, student engagement, and also then this, the, the kind of the need, the desire to have a, a bit of a chat over coffee as well, which I think we can facilitate, hopefully. Great, Thank you, Karen. Uh, the chat has now wandered off onto the subject of logos again, um, which I know is not really what we're supposed to be talking about, but uh, let me quickly share screen with a suggestion from Dave Horn. Jane, there was just a few comments in there as well, just to follow up on Karen's bit about the, the kind of community aspect, I think is quite important. So I think yeah. from what she was saying, that was a, yeah, a good. Yeah. And I think that came out of all three in different ways. So about empowering the community, helping everyone feel they're contributing and then supporting everyone. And that's really nice, common theme across them all. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think that's uh, I would agree with that as well. Um, Dave Horn did a little scribble here of another logo just to add to the confusion. Um, but we're not supposed to be talking about logos. I will stop playing with that. Sorry. Oh, Dave suggested that could, yeah, that could be a panel in the jigsaw, which would be nice. Daniel points out that it looks like BSG. Anyway, sorry, I will, I will stop thinking about the logo comments on the logo. Um, you know, keep them coming in and I'll try not to see them. Um, so it sounds like. Uh, from the workshops, we've got this sort of nice, solid theme coming out. Um, in terms of the continuance of VIP, the VIPs itself, I think despite all the problems with uh, people going on holidays and the fact that we kind of invented this structure in a um, rapid arm wave in May, um, the general structure of having different work groups and then a coordinating group has been pretty good because it's in a it's kept individual meetings small because if everybody wanted to get involved with it if we'd had one big meeting that would have been 20 odd people and we'd have spent a long time going around 
you know? Um, whereas the biggest group is the coordinating group and that's 11 or 12 people if they all turn up and, and that's kept meetings able to be reasonably efficient. Uh, certainly when you've got a talky person like me ending up organizing them. Um, so I certainly, I've, I've not got the impression from anything anyone said so far that that general structure is an issue, but it's clear that there are lots of suggestions about how we might um, tweak that to make it more accurately reflect what's going on. And thinking about organizing and looking and, and bringing in um, people from other parts of the community. So the first uh, topic for a chat discussion is going to be the future structure of the VIPs uh, and of the different working groups. The second thing is setting um, both goals for the medium term, which uh, we defined as the next academic year broadly, so where we want to be next June, say. Um, and then um, at which point we'll probably be looking at another meeting that summer to, to sort of look back and reflect and look forward and, and share all the good things we've done. Um, and then um, also thinking about longer term goals. So in the original planning, for example, um, applying for a substantial sum of money to make a really shiny um, landscape virtual field trip was one of the things that was on the list. But it sounds um, like the actual when we've actually drilled into that and thought about the needs of the community that actually looking for a smaller set of money for a training course come field trip creation come community development of training resources kind of thing would be much more useful. Um, so there's time to review those goals and obviously uh, ultimately the work group set their own goals, but I thought it would be very useful uh, to get the opinions of everyone here on what sorts of goals uh, would be useful, remembering that we're both trying to deal with this year's crisis and then with the future which may which i actually hope will involve more blended learning whether the pandemic's completely not an issue or whatever for many reasons and they include things like less environmental impact i have a student who commutes from doncaster every day by driving if he could commute virtually three days a week that would be fantastic um and also in terms of getting the most out of the learning experience. So having students prepared to make the most out of classes and giving them the flexibility that a lot of them need, um, depending on your kind of student, but a lot of students work and have caring responsibilities or family responsibilities. And often if they miss class, they get a set, at the moment, they get a second rate replacement. And that often means they miss a great deal or they, they have more work to do and finding ways to use these things to make it more equitable are important. Um, but so there's so that's two things to talk about. One is the structure of VIPs. And two is the broad goals or goals that you'd be interested in. And of course, we're particularly um, hoping that at some point in this, people will say, oh, that is a piece that needs doing, which I would like to volunteer for uh, at some point, because that was, that's always nice. Um, I think things two things we've identified that we maybe need to think about, are they part of a working group? Do they get their own? Does, or does a person take responsibility for that in another way is the newsletter, which we can get started um with the help of the interns and so on but would be looking to then hand over to someone else at christmas and the photo archive which i think sounds like a great idea it sounds like we thought of some platforms that would work um and that could be a useful job um so kim can we um think about putting people into groups again how many have we got at the moment uh, we can have nine per, per three rooms. Uh, yep, because we've got a bit longer to talk this time. Um, I, can we have um, half an hour, Kim? Uh, yep, that's fine. So to talk about these things, uh, I know some people have to head off and so on. Um, anyone who needs to head off during this, thank you very much for taking part and look out for the email with the various bits of information. Um, 
and otherwise the ideas will talk about this and then come back together for a short plenary and so can each group again somebody make notes okay Is everyone back who's coming back yeah well hello i hope you all managed to find some time to think a little bit about a couple of the questions before you uh, or around your um, general chatter because that always happens with these things it's just so nice to see some paleo people um so uh would people like to put some comments in the chat about ideas about the structure um of the vips so any points that have come up about structure volunteers to join groups etc uh and we really do expect turnover so if anyone is in a group or, or and feels that they're not able to contribute or whatever we really want to make that clear and we'll do in the email as well that we expect people to come in and out because you know the demands on on people you know are just so high at the moment um so eileen had some accidental returnage and already put the notes up from from one group um which was that we just we talked about the support the support for teaching group um and about that being probably sensibly within working group five but the main suggestion i think that came up about that was um that uh, perhaps having a teams a team of people who are interested in it because then we could um set up channels for the different topics share files in teams and then so we could do very immediate stuff and then respond to that or add things to the vip site maybe with a little bit more thought um so with the idea that maybe having a teams channel would let people go in and go oh i have this problem now in a, and then maybe a digest of this thing happened and this is what we learned that could go into a monthly newsletter or into a later presentation. Um, so there was a suggestion that uh, Working Group 5 can basically send out and pull people up, uh, send out to the wider group who wants to join it and set up a team. Um, one of the advantages of teams, as I understand it, is that uh, you can be an outsider in a team rather than um, having to belong to the institution. Um, if anyone in a team's institution can tell me more about that, because we're in the process of transitioning to it, it's not fully installed and we haven't had the training yet, but we're teaching in it from the 28th and we're inducting in it from the 14th of September. So <laughs> anyone who actually knows how to use it. Um, and it was suggested that that so that the um, teaching support group would have that it would have monthly coffee chats. And it would probably lead towards a half day um, meeting of some sort virtual meeting of some sort in December, which would let us share things both what worked and what didn't work uh, to share for people preparing for semester two um and it was important we did it rapidly because there are quite a few people who are either in immediate immediately looking for help in a very short term who are looking for help or who are preparing resources now which they're willing to share in rough form and, and develop um so anything else in terms of structure um so nikki's group thought the structure works quite well um but need to think about cross working group projects yes and also that there are some people who actually now want to join a working group now they've got a better idea of how it's working um or who had problems with the original forms so um are keen that we should send that the invitation should come out again i think simon you already included that in the feedback form there's a box where people can say if they want to yeah thank you simon um so um, the two main issues which seem to have come up, um, Jill reported was that um, help for help of sharing, again, theme that's come up, sharing guides for students for really basic things like doing age models or doing basic Excel manipulations. 
and again in various groups at various points people have either said i'm developing that now or i have that so helen shaw was talking about an exercise she already has written where that looks at percentages versus concentrations and how they can give different interpretations um so very quickly creating um a way to so to put those whether that's a, a a box folder or something where we can put those and share them quickly with a spreadsheet rather than in the main ones. Um, Nikki mentions a need for a gap analysis. Um, we continue to do gap analyses, or did you mean something different by cap capitalizing it, Nikki? Am I missing? Uh, no, no, that was just me. That, no, that's okay. I just want. I, I, there are so many acronyms in the world. No, no, it was just, uh, I think we talked about the gap analysis, but also being slightly overwhelmed by doing it. And I think we came to the conclusion that actually it might be one of those things that might pop up as we start to develop things over the next few weeks. We'll yeah. start to realise where those gaps are. I think that there was a suggestion from earlier on that perhaps we could get the interns to produce some really simple summary data, like for each of the categories. So we've got, say, categories of site type of our 280 resources, how many are lakes, peat, et cetera? How many are pollen diatoms, caron, amid beetles, et cetera? And that might help. Um, Des suggests that it would be good to have a list of the working group coordinators and members on the website. And that the big challenge is to keep going and maintain motivation. I think that was one of the last points people had here was just to get on with it. Um, informal meetings and then longer term maybe form more formal linkages with organizations like pages and the rgs and the qra and so on um which is nice uh nikki's offering a neotoma exercise so how are we going to share these yeah and eileen's pointed out yeah that was another group that felt that keeping momentum going was important so i think we now have um so I think that this sharing of teaching resources, I think we should keep it separate from the resources that are going on the website. But I want, I think that the same strategy, the same, the same basic idea of building a spreadsheet of everything that's out there and how to get hold of it. Sounds like a plan. Um, because that, that makes it easy for everyone to find it without having to ask. Yeah. Other people are offering things. Fantastic. Um, so having a spreadsheet that would be searchable, that means that nobody needs to ask anyone or dig through a load of files. Uh, the question is where the materials would go. And my first suggestion is to create a cloud folder. Um, I'm thinking rather than Google Drive, which some people have a lot of problems with, and some people are great with it. Some people have a lot of problems with it. Um, I have, I mean, I'm, I'm one of them because I have three Gmail addresses and it, and I find it very hard to organize and move things between folders in, but they've all got their faults. Amber Geek says no as well. Okay. Nikki says teams. Um, I was actually wondering about starting with a really, really simple, um, with not a Dropbox folder because that creates problems because of, um, file sizes, but a box folder, um, which we can, um, my university pays a light, uh, pays to box and I have a couple of terabytes of storage on it that I can use for anything. Um, and it, I can invite uh, and it was designed It's designed for a shared research project. So it's designed so you can the setup is I can invite anyone to join one folder. Um, so a spreadsheet and also you can send out links that are basically web links. So you could create the spreadsheet of the resource put the resource in the box folder and then take the link from the box folder and put it in the spreadsheet. Does that sound like something that would work as a structure? Okay. And says so that sounds good. And I think, right. And Kim, we've been using a box folder. Haven't we've been using box for uh, part of the hump head levels and it's been okay with, you know, you've not had any problems getting on it. Have you? No. Yeah. No, it's all good. It does seem a bit more friendly than um, than Google Drive, and of course, it is it is if we say use 
mine, for example, it is relatively the reason that Hull pays for it rather than have us all use OneDrive or Google Drive is that they're paying for a higher level of security. Um, so it would be relatively secure. And since this is kind of very much, you know, informal work in progress stuff. Right. So box folder plus spreadsheet. Would somebody like to volunteer to set up say a Google sheet or a, or an Excel sheet? We can do Excel sheets. We can put an Excel sheet in box, which you can then open to your computer and edit. Um, and when you open it, if you remember to press the right button, you can lock it so no one else can edit it. So you only get one. And if two people are editing it at the same time by mistake, it saves it saves two new versions. Um, so that sounds like a plan. But if somebody would like to volunteer to work with me and set up the spreadsheet side of it, uh, that would be great because otherwise I will volunteer for everything and then nothing will happen because I do that. So that's definitely one to think about. Um, so lots of things offered from that. Um, so to come back to Desi's list, um, said regular informal meetings to chat about what's going on could be very important. And I've got to say, I agree, I've really enjoyed these bits of workshop. And that maybe I wonder if maybe the next one in the calendar would be one in um, December. That would be to talk about the lessons learned from semester one, basically. Yeah. Um, so if I can come in here, I, yeah, I think that would be useful in the in our breakout group. We were talking about the importance of perhaps slightly more regular how's it going type sessions the sort of uh, informal meetings that were discussed by working group uh, five i think it was yeah. um that was mentioned then so that, that i guess that would be in addition to the uh, taking stock at the end of the semester yeah, Jane. um simon's asked if this would be in addition to the vips gnt as he's as, as apparently it's now known I think what we were talking about in the meeting, and do correct me if I'm wrong, uh, what we're talking about in a breakout meeting was more or less the same as the VIPS GNT, just the regular catch up, how's it going um, type thing. So is this this uh, in face, this in person um, support really, opportunity to chat about things, reflect, maybe get a little bit of feedback, so nothing, nothing too formal. Yeah, but just really here are a couple of hours, here's a Zoom link. Yes, probably something fairly short in, in regular. And as somebody said earlier, Daniel, I think it was, we just have to go ahead and just decide some time because you will not identify a time that will suit everybody every week. Oh, no, no. So doodle polls probably won't work. But yeah, basically pick a time that makes, uh, that, that, that makes reasonable sense. Um, so that, yeah, that definitely goes into a priority for, um, say, working group five. So I think one thing the we're, the coordinating group is going to need to do is to, as we capture all of these, because thank heavens for chats, which are wonderful, um, we'll be um, sort of list out the specific small jobs and things and then make sure they're assigned to working groups because all the working groups will be meeting in the next week or two. And Simon said, yeah, we can, if we, if we can time the, we can, obviously the coordinating group will organize will synthesize essentially and make try and make sure everybody works together because that's its job um and pass out the information um and that yeah we'll have less as time goes on as we get used to this that uh, or as we get busy makes a lot of sense um and i think i do think because not everybody's going to be able to make meetings uh, it will be important to try in this monthly newsletter idea as well. And again, um, looking for a volunteer or two. Obviously, the interns can help set it up and do it, but they're only with us for a certain amount of time. And the number of things that we've said, would that be a job for the intern is growing. Um, so, again, think about it. Uh, Simon would like the um, diagram to make the structure clear. Oh, Karen, fantastic. Is off to help. Uh, so the diagram to make the structure clear. Um, 
I did draw it. I, I do have a diagram which I'm not sure how widely it was shared, but we have a diagram and a document about the um, working groups. And um, I won't add that to the list for the immediate post meeting workshop, but it's something that I would like once we'll get the groups to feedback on how they'd like themselves to be represented and then maybe build a web page for groups. As, as Desi's group suggested, having who's the coordinator and so on on the web page. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, Simon's asking, uh, any volunteers for the Image Bank or Wikimedia? Or show, is this something, these specific roles are something we should ask about in the newsletter to let people who weren't available today have the opportunity to volunteer? We wouldn't want to hog all the fun. Yeah, okay, I agree with that. Um, there, there's there's a lot of work to be done, and um, I think we've got to think about sustainability and our own sort of well-being. So yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe somebody out there might have a lot of experience in this and might be really interested, and if not, we can revisit it. Yeah, when well, it's a good idea, and it's just people will have have need or interest. Uh, I would also hi Karen. Uh, I just uh, going to say I think probably um, we're going to need to take serious stock of everything that's come in because even just my own notes have um, become slightly overwhelming. Um, so just to say I, I agree with Des basically I, I think we need to have a decompress and a think and then um, yeah. yeah but we, we're definitely going to need more people I, I think. I would also say that the, a suggestion earlier Oh, we've got the interns to help now which is fantastic because they will help us get stuff out um, but there was also a suggestion that pieces of this may make excellent opportunities for a professional placement type of project a placement project that if, if for undergraduate students because they're going to be in particularly short supply this year and of course part of the point of a placement is they work for someone external who they don't aren't taught by and, and build a relationship with a new boss but you know that's easy if I have a placement student I'll give them to Karen she can give one to me you know so that might be a way to do it because some of these specific pieces I think would make depending on how your placement module works but they may make very useful experience for students with particular interests um, that are Covid proof um, particularly we often have students who are interested in teaching related material um, So yes, anything, I'll say as we have nine minutes to go now officially, um, has anyone got anything else they would like to say or contribute or stick in the chat or actually show their faces and say something because they're really d bursting to say it? Uh, Simon's asking about web design and IT placements. Um, placement students yeah that's definitely something to explore um my concern of course is always sustainability but if they can uh, create working documents on how to do stuff that would be really cool yeah i'm, I'm just thinking if they can't go out and work in the we've got a big art and media section and, and i guess they do web design and all sorts of stuff it, it, just in terms of you know the the forward-facing stuff and and some of the data handling and things like that it, it doesn't really matter whether it's to do with chronomids or diatoms or whatever it's, it's just data and if there's somebody with those skills and we were happy that they would be supervised um appropriately so they didn't muck it all up then i don't think it necessarily has to be a job or archaeology etc type a placement students it could be somebody with a different skill set who would have a different perspective and that might be very valuable um, sorry, just, just before I forget, and it's not directly related, um, my brain's in the process of uh, shutting down now, so I think I'm approaching the end, uh, for today anyway. Um, the, for those people who, certainly UK institutions interested in higher education academy membership, and they are not yet members at any level, getting involved in this group and, and recording what you've done and contributing could be useful, could be helpful. Uh, these things are useful for these things, assuming that's the sort of thing that you're into. And even if you're not, your university will probably encourage HE membership of some level. So 
bear, bear, bear in mind you can do that. I'm not saying that's why you should be involved in the group, but it's a side benefit. Yes. Yeah, and it's also a great opportunity to, um, if you're going for higher level membership, uh, one of the things you, you know, so if you're going for senior, then you need to demonstrate uh, leadership and impact beyond your organization. So uh, stepping up to lead one of the projects would make a fantastic case study for, for um, that application uh, as well. Thanks, Nikki. Nikki says she has to leave. So any other... Um, Points or comments? No, Althea asked about sharing case studies like the Neotoma example and, and data. I think we, if we roll that in with the wider teaching resource, I think that would be great. Um, so that's clearly a task. Yep, yeah, thumbs up. Excellent. So I think all that remains to me is to say thank you very much, everyone, for a lovely day. Um, it's been really nice to actually talk science stuff and to see you all um, that um, we will say, well, the next steps are that we will send out a post workshop message, hopefully, hopefully by Friday, but the dissertation crisis that we're having here may, other people's crises may interrupt, but in within the next week, definitely, uh, which will include links to the feedback form, which has opportunities to say what you want to sign up for, uh, which will include information about the first pages that are up and so on. So the key information. Um, and that will also include information about um, the fact that we're going to have these support meetings, possibly a first date to at least have a little rant and so on. Um, the working, the various working groups uh, will organize themselves to have a meeting to coordinate coordinating group will organize itself to have a meeting almost certainly next week now um, and from all of those um, I intend that we'll, we'll put together uh, myself and the interns will put together the first newsletter um, so it will start at the beginning of the month and uh, hopefully that will have more concrete detail about specific things and if you ever have trouble with any of it, uh, you send an email. If you put VIPs in, if you always put VIPs in the header, um, I've set up a filter in my inbox that puts it into a VIPs folder. And I check that sort of once every couple of days. But that makes sure that it's really obvious. It doesn't get lost in panicked undergraduates or whatever. Um, anything else anyone needs to say? Um, yeah, thanks, Jane. Uh, just echoing the comments in the chat. Thanks, Jane, for. Uh holding it all together today and also to Kim uh, mm. for coordinating for providing uh, yeah. for this uh, uh, Zoom account um, yeah. and, and running things and coordinating things today and yesterday as well so thank yeah. you thanks and Kim for that. I also really want to emphasize that this is a group effort I'm just the one who talks a lot and also tends to for fail first when we're doing the bit where everyone stares at each other about who will do what there's this point about being really good at staying silent when he's asked to do things is, is I can, I can attest to that skill. Um, <laughs> I tend to, I tend to break first. <laughs> Although Des agreed to be part of this group and has been absolute stalwart. Um, so yeah, thanks very much, Kim, for hosting um, all the presenters and everyone for being really great in the discussions and really positive and enthusiastic about this project. So thank you and we hope to see you all soon. Indeed.